In this episode, we're building the Royal Enfield Continental GT 535 chopper frame, but we're still in the design phase. Even though I have the bike pretty much sketched out how I want it to be, there's a bunch of little components that all have to come together. It doesn't really translate very well to video. It's a little bit boring, but I promised that I was gonna bring everybody along for all of the stages of this build. So let's go through it all. I'm only running a rear brake because that's just a chopper thing. And I need to get the caliper mounted to the frame somehow. So this is the original caliper that came on the rear here. It is a single piston, no piston on this side, which means this caliper is on this little slidey thing, which means I got to run this whole big chunky thing for this to work. And then I looked over at my Ducati. This is the original rear caliper from my 1999 Ducati 900 Supersport. It's two pistons, but one on each side. And so the brake stay that it would be attached to only has to go through the axle. And then you have the stay part of the brake stay, which holds it in place. And I've actually redesigned that. This is the 3D printed version into something a little bit more tidy for my Ducati. And I was like, well, I can just do the same thing if I get another one of these for the Royal Enfield. So I found one. It's literally brand new, nice and tidy, has brake pads. And this disc is the same exact diameter as what's on the Ducati. So this is gonna work absolutely well on here. And I've already done the design work to pull the critical dimensions, basically this, off of that and put it on here. So I'm going to reference my design that I already have from this to make something super tidy to go on here and fit the frame very well. So this is what I came up with. It's not exactly revolutionary. It's quite simple, but it is designed around the lines of the frame and that caliper is going to be tucked in there very nicely. I also designed this axle block and adjuster system where the axle block is going to bolt onto the axle plate and adjust through this screw right here. And then behind it is basically a backing plate that will be thin stainless steel so that the adjuster isn't sliding on paint or powder or whichever direction I go. And that means these four holes here are threaded, which is also going to allow me to place those axle plates on this fixture that I designed for my jig. It's absolutely critical that I get all of this figured out before I start bending or cutting any kind of tubing, but now we're here, so let's get into a little action sequence. made this little guide or you know 
plate to lean on and make sure everything's nice while I coat these tubes. So I'm trying something new there too. So I just put the camera on the charger and I spent the last hour checking, measuring, tweaking, bracing, and tacking these pieces into perfect position for this singular but very critical cut. Look at this, really happy with the way things are working out. And I think we're going to end the episode here. Obviously we're not yet done with the frame, but I'm still waiting for a couple parts that I need before I can make any more progress and I wanna get this video out. I've already been sitting here looking at this frame for more time than I care to admit, but there's a couple things that I'd like to point out that I intentionally put into the design. Uh, in all of my recent videos, I've been really promoting the use of 3D to flesh out your ideas before you make a single cut, a single bend. But it does take some time to um, kind of train your eye to see it in 3D so that it shows up in real life exactly how you intend it. Uh, and that's really just the viewing style and whether you're looking orthographic or from perspective. And you really gotta switch between the two to be able to see what you're building and I think I've gotten to that point and everything as it is here is exactly as I intended, wanted and designed. And there's a couple design choices that I made that uh, are revealing themselves. I, I knew what I was doing, but seeing it, I'm really happy with it. And that is some really subtle decisions in bending radiuses. So I'm running a different bend radius here than I am here and I am here. So starting with the back, this is a 1.93 as I've calculated, um, which is really, really tight. And this bending die came with the bender from CT Newman, which I cannot recommend enough. It's not cheap, but You'll never need another bender ever again in your life. It's really the best that there is out there that I'm aware of before you go into like CNC stuff. So this 1.9 is super tight. Um, the bending dies that you would use for this bender are from Pro Tools. And until CT Newman came up with that die, the tightest radius you could get is the one I have, which is three and a half inches. And so I normally don't like the loop style frame because it's usually quite big but with this bending die it's super tight and with the loop it actually allows you to extend this line further back because there's obviously a radius here normally this would go way back here and if you terminated here and you wanted to go this far you would extend the wheelbase by like four or five inches and maybe that's what you want to do but ultimately i have the constraints of the design as I wanted, but it allows me to have a longer looking tube and I get this straight line, which is basically the chopper ideal. So I'm really happy with that. But as we move to the front of the bike, the bends get longer and more sweeping. Um, they would look a little bit more sharp of an angle. And so going from 1.9, these two bends are 3.5 and it makes it a little bit more gradual. And then this bend is a four inch bend radius. This is a one and a quarter inch tube. So it's getting thicker up front with more gentle curves and then thinner towards the back with sharper curves. And I feel like it gives, I don't know how to describe it, but a kind of progression um, of a general flow, uh, a line, and even proportion because of the thickness of the tubes. Really happy with that. In this episode, I've shown a couple 
um, of my tricks that I pulled out that I'm basically leveraging the ability to easily design and laser cut this flat plate for the axle blocks, how I put the axle plates on the axle block and then incorporating this tapping hole into the adjuster block. Uh, this rest, the rest that I had up here when I was cutting this and then also being able to design that tool to cope directly on the frame jig instead of in the vise and measuring and not being sure and then getting it wrong and wasting this tube. A lot of it's just peace of mind. I know that I can do it, but peace of mind while building really helps the whole experience. And I think that affects the outcome. So happy with that. In the next episode, we're going to finish the frame and there's a couple tricks in there. One that I've alluded to and one that I haven't that I think are going to be pretty cool in the overall outcome of the frame. The tricks so far have just it been in the process of how I put the frame together on the jig, but these next pieces will be tricks that actually show up in the frame. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Yay.